Hello again and welcome to your fifth Vuex tutorial and in this video we're going to talk about getters. Alright then, so to explain the concept of getters I want to just run through a quick example. So say we have some kind of super sale week on this awesome shop website over here and we want to display our prices differently, maybe even slash them in half. So instead of £40 it's £20 etc. So I suppose what we could do is come down here and create a new computed property, which is going to change the data in some way, shape or form and output it differently. Make sense? So let's do that. First of all, I'm in product list two at the minute. Let's go into product list one and create a new computed property. And this right here is going to be called sale products. OK, so sale products like so. And inside this computed property, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, I want to create a new set of data, which is going to be half of the current data. Now, I don't want to edit the data directly. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable, first of all, inside here called sale products. And I'm going to set this equal to this dot store, right, dot state, dot products. So we're accessing the data, first of all. Then what we're going to do is use the map method on those. And what that's going to do is take this original products array right here and it's going to map it to a new array and perform some kind of functionality on the data as it maps it through. So we can slash the prices by half each iteration round as we cycle through the products. Make sense? OK, so this function right here takes a callback function. Now I'm going to use an ES6 fat arrow function to do this. So to do that, I'm going to say product, first of all, that's the single product we get each time around as we map through this array. OK, so it's going to refer to the individual product item each time around. We use the fat arrow and then we have the function. So inside here, we need to return something, right? We need to return a new value, which is going to be mapped to the new array. So we're returning an object because remember, each of these products is an object in this array. Right. Every product is an object which has a name attribute and also a price attribute. So we need to return an object each time around, which we're going to output in this new array. So each object is going to have a name property and it's also going to have a price property. OK, so the name, first of all, well, currently the name is something like this shiny star, red shells, etc. So what I want to do is add asterisks on each side of the name. So I'm going to set the name equal to a string, double asterisks, and then we're going to concatenate the product dot name. So whatever the current product dot name is, we're accessing that product there. Remember, then we want to output the name and then we want to output as well two more asterisks on the other side of it. OK, so these are just like flashy bobs to say, look, this item is on sale. Cool. So that's the name sorted. Now for the price, we want to output half of the price. So we're going to say the new price is the product dot price, the current price that is on this product being passed through. Then we want to divide it by two. OK, so that is the new object we're going to output to this array for each product. So now we've returned that and we have that new array stored right here in sale products. So what we're going to do now is return this array. So we'll return sale products like so. OK, so now what we can do is cycle through sale products right here instead of the normal products. And then we're going to output the new sale product name and the new sale product price. So let's do that. We'll cycle through sale products like so. Save it. Now, if we come over here, we can see the new price is now half of what it was. You can see 10 over here instead of 20. And these asterisks are on either side of the product name. Cool. So we have this computed property for sale products, but we don't just want to show it in one section of the website. We, we can't have inconsistency where we're saying one thing is 20 pounds here and 40 pounds somewhere else on the website. That's just not professional, right? So what we need to do is add this to the other component as well. So I'm going to grab it all and I'm going to go to product list two and I'm going to add it in right here. And as well, we're going to cycle through sale products here. So if I save this now, we should see the sale products output there as well as here. Cool. So this is all right. It works. But imagine this scenario. Imagine we had maybe 10 different components and we had this computing property on all of those 10 different components. And then one day the manager of the company comes to you and says, actually, you know what? Half price is too much. 
I want you to change it to 75% off and also get rid of those asterisks and just make it red or something instead, right? So essentially what you're then gonna have to do is go through each different component to each one of these computed properties and you're gonna have to update the whole damn thing each time around, okay? So that's 10 times doing the work. Not exactly the most efficient way to do things. So instead what we can do is we can store this kind of calculation right here as a getter on the store then we just have one place where this is written we're keeping our code dry and we're not repeating ourselves one central place where this um, manipulation is stored as a getter on the store then we can access that getter and output it wherever we need it okay so i'm going to copy this code right here and what i'm going to do in fact i'll just copy this stuff right here and what i'll do is head to my store.js and this is where we define our getters so outside of the state, I'm going to put a little comma and then I'm going to say getters. And this is an object and inside here we can have as many getters as we want. So I want to create a getter called sale products like so. OK, now this is going to be a function. And again, we can use a fat arrow function because it takes a parameter, first of all, called state. So we'll take that parameter. We we'll use the fat arrow and then start the function. OK. So inside here, we can paste that code. So what we're doing here is we're saying, okay, a new variable called sale products is equal to this.store.state.products. Now, first of all, we don't need to do this.store anymore. We're in the store and we get the state as a parameter. So we can delete this stuff right here. So we're just saying, okay, we take the state.products, which is this data, and we're mapping them to this new array right here using this information. And we're returning that, okay? So now we just have this code on the store. So now we have it here, we can delete it in the other two components. So let's delete it right here, first of all. And also, we'll save that. Let's delete it in the other one right here. So notice I'm keeping the actual computed property name, sale product right there. And I'm also keeping it in this one because we're still going to use it to access this getter we've just defined on the store, right? So first of all, let's save that. Now then, if we want to access this getter, what do we need to do? Well, inside this computed property, really simple, all we need to do is say return. Then we're going to say this.store.getters.saleproducts, like so. Okay? And I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the other component. So this is in product list one, let's save that. And in product list two, let's do the same thing. And save that and now we can still see that data being output so instead of defining the computed property uh, code here and potentially having to change it many many times to keep on top of your application we've just defined it once in the store as a getter and you can see getters or think of getters as kind of like computed properties for your store they're the same kind of thing they just get the data and compute new data based on it if you like and then we can receive that getter. We can use it in our different components over here. We can say this.store.getters.saleproducts to use it to get that data. And then it's going to be output as sale products in the template right here. OK, so that is getters. They essentially get the data from our store and then pass it back to our components when we need it.